This tutorial looks at reactions involving gas, how to measure moles of gas, and the fact that uh, one mole of any gas occupies 24 cubic decimeters at room temperature and pressure. First though, how to design an experiment in order to measure the volume of a gas being given off uh, during that reaction and find its total at the end. In the chemistry lab there's various ways of collecting gases in experiments. One way is to use a measuring cylinder which you'd fill up with water and invert into a trough of water and then from the experiment you'd have a delivery tube which went underneath the measuring cylinder. You could then measure the volume of gas because of course the numbers on the measuring cylinder will now be upside down reading from 10, 20, 30, 40 and so on and you can read off the volume of gas against the measuring cylinder over a period of time. A second way is similar but this time slightly more accurately using a burette because a burette will measure the gas uh, much more accurately to 0.1 of a cubic centimetre but essentially it's the same method collecting the gas above water. The third and probably the neatest way is to use a gas syringe which is a large glass syringe which is connected by delivery tube to the experiment and here because the glass gas syringe has got a ground glass joint and it moves very very freely we can very accurately read the volume of the gas on the syringe. It's best not only because it's the most accurate but also because should you wish to you could weigh the syringe before and after the experiment to find out not only the volume of the gas but also its mass. A common experiment in the chemistry lab when we're looking at rates of reaction in particular is to measure the volume of gas evolved when marble chips uh, react with an acid like hydrochloric acid. In this experiment you would put a fixed volume of hydrochloric acid for example 10 cubic centimeters of a one mole per cubic decimeter solution into a suitable uh, flask or in this case a boiling tube and then add for example five grams of marble chips which we're assuming will be an excess of marble chips and uh, making sure you've set the gas syringe to zero so that it's empty at the beginning you would uh, add the chips and then very quickly replace the bung and connect up the a gas syringe and then probably measure the volume of the gas that had been produced every say 15 seconds until the reaction had stopped and the volume was no longer increasing. You could then repeat the whole experiment this time for example using only five cubic centimeters of the acid to see how the difference in volume of the acid would make a difference to the volume of the gas evolved. While the reaction's running, you'd pop your results into a table sort of of this design. I then graph my results for 10 cubic centimeters of acid. I'm going to get a total volume of 60 cubic centimeters, whereas for the 5 cubic centimeters, I'm going to get exactly half as much gas made because if I'm using half as many moles of the acid I'm going to get half as many moles of the gas made. And the number of moles of gas is related very closely to the volume. Now in each of the previous two experiments we'd used an excess, an excess of marble chips which means more than enough and therefore the amount of carbon dioxide produced, the volume or the mass of carbon dioxide produced, had been related only to the amount or the volume of the acid that's been used. We say that the one which is related to the amount of product is the limiting reactant. So the limiting reactant is the reactant not in excess and which is all used up at the end of the reaction. Let's use another analogy. Let's say that you were making eggs on toast and you were making one egg on three slices of toast. Now you've got eight eggs and you've got 30 slices of toast. So 
Which have you got too much of? Eggs or slice of toast? Well, for each egg, we've got three slices of toast. So let's knock them out. One egg, three slices of toast. 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 As you can see, we've run out of eggs before we've run out of toast. So the amount of eggs on toast that we can make is related to the number of eggs. So that's the limiting reactant, whereas the toast is in excess. So in summary, the limiting reactant is the reactant not in excess, but which is all used up at the end of the reaction. And of course, once this limiting reactant has been used up, the reaction has to stop because there's no more particles of that reactant left. And the amount of product, be it carbon dioxide gas or whatever, is directly proportional to the amount of the limiting reactant that we started with. And it will be directly proportional in terms of moles. Back to acid and marble chips. Here, A is showing 50 cubic centimetres of 2 mole per cubic decimetre solution of acid, whereas B is showing 50 cubic centimetres of 1 mole per cubic decimetre solution of acid. Now, a couple of things to note. First of all, that A will give double the volume of gas because A has got double the molecules of the acid. Um, the reaction stops in each case when all the acid has been used up, but also note the difference here, massive difference in the rate of reaction. A is using a more concentrated acid, and therefore the initial part of the reaction is faster. B is using a more dilute acid, and therefore the initial part of the reaction is slower. And the number of moles of gas is very much related to the volume of the gas. One mole of any gas occupies 24 cubic decimeters at room temperature and pressure. So knowing that, we could calculate the amount in moles of a volume of gas at room temperature and pressure given the volume. And we should be able to do that in both ways. So for example, if we're given the uh, volume, we could work out the amount of moles. Or if we're given the amount in moles, we could work out the volume. There's our fact that we're going to be using. The molar volume of any gas is 24 cubic decimeters at room temperature and pressure. So if one mole of gas occupies 24 cubic decimeters, therefore 0.1 moles would occupy well, 0.1 times 24 cubic decimeters which is 2.4 cubic decimetres. How many moles of gas are there in 120 cubic centimetres of oxygen? Well, 120 cubic centimetres is the same as 0.12 cubic decimetres. And therefore, the number of moles, or the amount in moles, is going to equal the volume that you've got, which is 0.12, over the volume of one mole, which is 24. And when we work this out on a calculator, it's going to be 0 0.005 moles of gas. Jenny investigates the reaction between excess sulfamic acid and sodium nitrite solution. Uh, solid sulfamic acid, don't worry, you're not meant to know what that is, reacts with sodium nitrite to make nitrogen. Look at the apparatus she uses. So she's got a gas syringe connected to her flask. Jenny measures the total volume of gas in the gas syringe every 30 seconds. She plots the results on a graph and look at the graph now. You can see, as you might expect, that the volume of gas is increasing with time until it reaches a maximum. And that must be there where the reaction has finished. And that's the total volume of gas which is produced. Now, a couple of questions uh, require me to read off the graph. The first one says, look at the graph, what's the total volume of nitrogen made at the end of the reaction? And also, we're going to be asked in part two, what's the total number of moles of nitrogen made after 30 seconds? Let's have another look at that graph. So first of all, let's read off the total volume at the end of the experiment. We read along this line, 
and that's going to be 64 cubic centimetres. We also need to know what the volume after 30 seconds, so we'll read up from the 30 and across, and that's going to be 40 cubic centimetres. So, what is the total volume of nitrogen made at the end of the reaction? That's 64 cubic centimetres. Reaction is done at room temperature and pressure. What's the total number of moles of nitrogen made after 30 seconds? One mole of nitrogen occupies a volume of 24,000 cubic centimetres, or 24 cubic decimetres. So, the number of moles is going to be the volume, which is 40 cubic centimetres, over the volume of one mole in cubic centimetres is 24,000 cubic centimetres, comes to 0 0.0016, well it goes 66666, so 167, so that's going to be 0 0.00167 moles to three significant figures. And sodium nitrite is the limiting reactant, what does this mean? It is the reactant that is completely used up at the end of the reaction. And there's our results, it's 64 cubic centimetres off the graph. And there's our answer, 64 cubic centimetres, 40 over 24,000 leaves 0 0.00167. It says allow two significant figures, I'd always go for three. Um, and yes, the limiting reactant is the one which is used up first or that isn't in excess. And another exam question, hydrogen peroxide solution slowly decomposes when a catalyst is added to it, uh, to oxygen and water. We can see that it's been done on a balance. And it measures the mass of the contents of the conical flask at the start, and once he's finished, he measures it again, and look at the result. Well, it appears to me to have gone down by 0 0.10 grams. Look at the results table. Uh, the mass of one mole of oxygen molecules is 32 grams. Calculate the amount in moles of oxygen made in this experiment. Well, okay, the uh, number of moles equals... The mass of the oxygen, which is going to be 0 0.1 grams, over the mass of one mole of oxygen, which is 32 grams, and that comes to 0 0.003125 moles. So the amount is 0 0.0031, let's say 3 moles. In another experiment, 0 0.0025 moles of oxygen molecules are made. One mole of oxygen molecules at room temperature and pressure occupies a volume of 24 cubic decimeters. Calculate the volume of that number of moles. Okay, so the volume will be the number of moles times the molar volume. And they want the answer in cubic decimeters, so we'll work in cubic decimeters is 0 0.0025 times 24 cubic decimeters equals 0 0.06 cubic decimeters. Uh, so the answer is 0 0.06 cubic decimeters. Elliot wants to measure the volume of oxygen made, draw a label diagram of the apparatus he could use. Well, let's assume that he's doing this in a flask, as he was before. So we've got the flask containing the hydrogen peroxide and the catalyst. We've got a tube coming out of that flask. Delivery tube, so we'll need a bung in the top of that flask as well. And that's going to be connected by a piece of rubber tubing to a gas syringe. And the gas syringe will look a little like that. And we probably label that gas syringe. And there's our answers, 0 0.003125. Uh, I think I gave that answer there, 0 0.06. And the use of a gas syringe or burette and whether it will work or not, whether there's no leaks or blockages in uh, my diagram anyway.